we're coming back to volumes. We're circling back around to it, pardon the pun, partly because there are lots of things to look at in volumes, just like in integration. Uh, you're going to see later on today, there are techniques to be able to work out these volumes that seem to have nothing to do with volume. So I'll let Mrs. Lees, I won't spoil uh, what she's going to show you shortly, but that'll come later on. I want you to have a look at this shaded area I've put on the board. I've given you the equation of this parabola. I've given everything you need to know about the boundaries of it to work out what that area is. We're going to work out a volume to do with this area, but I want you to have a think for a second. Just use your intuition. I know that you haven't got all the information you absolutely need, but if you were to work out a volume associated with this region, which way do you think the volume would go? Just take a guess, because you can go in two directions, right? Which way would you guess that it goes? I, I can see most of you doing it with you. You're probably guessing it should go around the x-axis, right? That's a very good guess. What's the cue that gives you that guess? Well, for starters, you seem to have been given the x boundaries. So this is at least a start. So if you've been given x boundaries, it's not that outrageous to assume you're going to be evaluating an x volume, right? Uh, not only that, but you see how you've got the zero and the two down here. This region is bounded by the x-axis. Do you see that, right? It's the curve and it goes underneath. So if you were to ask for the y, like going around this way, you would expect to have this area shaded in here, which is bounded by the y-axis, yeah? But you do not. Here's why we left this for um, a little bit later. You can work out this volume, this shaded area, around the y-axis, and that's what makes this particular volume challenging. Okay, so go ahead, draw your little revolution arrow. What's going to happen when we rotate this around the y-axis? Well, what's this thing going to look like? Just take a minute for a second. Take a minute for a second. Take a moment. Think about that potter's wheel again. Think about which way it's rotating. Think about the shape you're going to get. Hmm. Now I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to get you to try to draw this volume before I show you what it looks like, okay? It'll take you like 15 seconds. Draw, even if it's like completely wrong, I want you to try and apply your mind to imagine what this is going to look like if we want to spin it around the y-axis. Okay, so I have some, um, I have some interesting shapes appearing on pages, quite a few different versions, okay? Here's what I want you to picture. Here's a bit of a tip for you. We're rotating, right? We're rotating. So the object that you're going to get always ends up with rotational symmetry every time because, you know, whichever axis you're going around, uh, you're creating the same shape and you're just rotating it, spinning it. So you get a rotationally symmetrical object, right? If it's rotational symmetrical and it's around this line, then see this interval over here, this vertical line? it should appear exactly the same everywhere you look around the rest of the edges of the shape, right? So it should extend out this way, out of the whiteboard, and it should whip all the way back around and come to this opposite side. So see how you have two over here? You can guarantee at negative two, you will get the same line over on this side. Even if what you had was not, I'm just, I've given you an even function, which is kind of convenient, but if I'd given you a cubic, don't worry about drawing this. If I'd given you a cubic, and I'd said, okay, look at this area I'm shading right now. Do you see it's more or less the same shape as the one that I gave you over here, right? For all intents and purposes. If I were to rotate this around the y-axis, even though like this guy goes down here, this is actually the area I'm interested in, right? So it looks like it would be something like this. You're gonna get that spinning around. Do you see that? Like this part over here becomes irrelevant because it is not part of the region being rotated. Does that make sense? Uh, I gave you this one because it's sort of easy. You'll get the same thing on both sides, okay? Right, so you can see, you know, sort of on profile, this is the edges of our shape, right? But it's rotating and I wanna try and capture that. So I'm getting something like this. Do you see that? This top edge is going to rotate around and you're getting sort of this bowl shape, right? It's not just the top that rotates, you've also got the bottom, right? Do you see that's rotating around? I can't actually see through the object, so I'm going to make that a dotted line underneath there. Does that make sense? 
do you see what's going on? Each part of this region will rotate around, so I'm looking for each part. Uh, one more thing I'm going to do, just to give my mind a little bit of help. Do you need to put this in? No, but it helps you visualize what's happening. The inner surface of this volume, the inner surface which comes from the parabola, right? Uh, it's all curved. It's all curved. So you sort of have like a, a bowl, right? It's empty in here. So I'm going to put these kind of like rotating lines because you can see inside the shape. You can sort of peer over the top edge, right? <coughs> that is the volume that we're interested in. That's the volume we're trying to find. Okay, so think about this. Um, we normally have two ways, V equals, V equals, to work out volumes that come from solids of revolution. Two ways, right? Um, they both start with an integral, right? The very first time we had a look at this, we were rotating around the x-axis. Do you remember that? That was how we started. So we went from A to B. What were the things we were adding up again? We we're adding up cylinders, which start with a pi. The radius squared, if you're going this way, the radius is a vertical thing, right? So that's why you ended up with y squared dx. Remember that? This is when you're rotating around the x-axis. What changes if I rotate around the y-axis? Well, for starters, I need some new boundaries. I'm not going to write a to b just to give myself a mental cue that they're different boundaries. They're going to be these boundaries, right? Um, you're still doing cylinders, so you still have a pi, but then what changes? x squared dy. So you can see, just to remind you, the operative variable is this one down here. Right? You're rotating around the x-axis, integrate with respect to x. You're rotating around the y-axis, integrate with respect to y. OK, which one of these do you think I'm going to need to use? Not a trick question. I'm going to have to use the second one, right? Because I have nothing to do with rotation around the x-axis. So I already know that this is the one I'm interested in. But by itself, it won't cut it. By itself, if I just use this on this, what boundaries would I put in? Like, that's the first thing you've got to write down. This is a little trickier. What boundaries do you think I should put in? Hmm. Where do the boundaries come from? They usually come from this region that you're looking at here, right? Where it goes from top to bottom, OK? But there's a bit of a weird thing happening here. Um, if you went from 0 up to, what's this value at the top? Can you, it's, it's 5, right? 2 squared plus 1. So I might as well put that in. If I went from 0 to 5, 0 to 5, what would be the region that corresponds to that? Hmm. Now, I can try to shade it, I can try, but I'm going to run into some problems, right? Um, from 5 downwards, I'm going to get, don't put this in because your diagram is going to get too busy. Uh, I'm going to get this kind of area, right? Do you see that? This is bounded by the y-axis, okay? But then it gets to 1, that's 1, and then there's no region down here. So there's no area, so how can it rotate around? 0 to 5 doesn't give you something sensible. It certainly does not give you this volume. Okay? So what I'm trying to get at is this on its own doesn't give you the shape that you need. In fact, it sort of gives you the opposite. Like we've got a sort of bowl looking shape, right? It's hollow on the inside. If I went from 1 to 5, you'd get the hollow on the inside, the part that I don't want. Okay? So now think back. Think back to what you were looking at with areas. And we looked at differences of areas. I am going to need to use this, but it just isn't the whole picture. If it gives me the part inside, the part I don't want, how do I get the part that I do want? OK, so look at the whole shape. Just sort of take a step back and look at the entire thing. You've got this whole cylinder, right, which is five units high, and it has a radius of two. Do you see that? Maybe we should all label that. Okay, This height is equal to five. And this radius is equal to 2. There's a big cylinder, which is the outside of the shape. And then, as it were, we sort of dig out. We carve out this inside bit, the curvy bit. right? So all I'm doing is actually taking the difference of two volumes. The difference of two volumes. I know how to do that. Volume equals. OK. What do I begin with? I begin with the entire cylinder, just one whole cylinder. So it's pi, what's r in this case? 2 times the height, which in this case is 
five. It has to go all the way down to the bottom, right? So there's that part. That's the whole cylinder. But what I want to carve out, hence the subtraction, is this inside bit. What happens when I take the red area and rotate that? Does that make sense? So I'm going to form the integral. It's from one to five because it's going around the y-axis, so I'm interested in y boundaries. And it's going to be pi, look, look down there, x squared dy, right? Because I'm rotating around the y-axis. So y boundaries with respect to y, does that make sense? Okay. That was the hard part, working out, like putting all the pieces together. The rest of it, I just have to do a bit of evaluation and some simplification, okay, a bit of substituting. So, what's the whole cylinder going to be? Pi times 4 times 5, 20 pi. Should I approximate that? There was no reason to. It doesn't end up neater when you do. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it exact. What have I got over here? Well, 1 to 5 pi. What is x squared? I don't want x squared. I want it in terms of y's, right? So over here, you can see I just need to subtract 1 from both sides. Whoops, and not rub it out while I'm doing that. That'll give me x squared on its own. So y take away 1 equals x squared. Does that make sense? Like, do you see why I did that? I want to know what x squared is so I can get rid of it. Okay. So y minus 1. At this point, it no longer looks like a volume question, it's just an integral. You guys can take over, let me give you 20, 30 seconds, work out what the primitive is, go ahead and evaluate it, and then let's see what we get at the end. Okay, happy? Yeah? Okay, so you worked out your primitive, you evaluated it, you can see at this point here, would I be upset if you wrote like four squared on two minus zero? No, but I like doing something like this because it doesn't take me a huge amount of time and it gives me an easy way to work out, like if I did something wrong, if it's a bit, ridiculous down the bottom, I can work out where that error happened.